Are you struggling to write the literature review to your research paper? Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step how I go about structuring and writing my literature review. And we're really going to simplify it for you so that after watching this video, you can go off and probably in one day structure everything and write everything. It really doesn't have to be that complicated to write the literature review. I know a lot of people struggle with it, but this video is going to show you how to do it more simply so that you can go off, finish the literature review and submit your paper. So let's dive in. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kliczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly publish research papers in top journals in the field. And if you're enjoying this video, then hit the like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss future videos like that. All right, so what we're gonna do is work backwards from you know a published paper and from a title of a published paper to show you sort of the steps that you need to go through in order to structure a literature review in a research paper. And by the way, the same thing would apply to a PhD thesis. It's just that it would be much longer, right? And you might be thinking, okay, but I, I mean, I, I'm still writing the paper. I don't have the, ta the paper published, right? Well, it's, it's the same thing. You're just looking at your aim, right? So you want to copy and paste the aim of your paper as the first thing. In here, I'm just going to use the, the title of the paper, but you can use the aim of your paper because surely you already know what the aim is, right? And we're going to start working from the aim. Now, the easiest way to organize your literature review and write it in literally one day is to look at the main topics that are within your title or within the aim of your study, right? So I'm going to list all the main topics um, below the title. And we're going to try to organize the literature review around these topics right and I'm for the, for the time being I'm just going to list them in no particular order um, just as they come up in the title or in your aim right and I'll just then try to organize them but first I'm just going to list the, the titles right um, so that, that would be the first one of course I could list them separately right and first talk about this concept of native speakerism and then English language teaching but like that would be too general like we want to dive in straight into into this right uh, then we've got you know these native speakers in here as well uh, let me copy and paste that right so that that would be our second main concept right and then we've got conferences right and plenary speakers right so i'll just copy and paste that um, yeah th these could be like two separate topics so again you could talk about conferences and the importance of conferences and then you could talk about um, plenary speakers right and that's probably what i'm going to do um, but these would be the main topics i don't really need to talk about anything else um, i think in here right so the first step to organize your literature review is just to list all the topics based off the aim of your uh, research paper or based off the title if you already invented the title right now that we've got the main topics we've kind of got to think like what is the most logical way of organizing them right what should I talk about first in the literature review and what should I talk about second now how do you do that the easiest way and usually the most logical is to go general to specific now I can't really talk about conferences and plenary speakers first because conferences and plenary speakers aren't like really the main driving force of my uh, topic. The main driving force of my topic is this, right? Native speakerism in English language teaching. That's the main driving force, right? So it wouldn't make sense to talk about conferences and plenary speakers. Like conferences and plenary speakers are kind of like a subtopic, like a more specific aspect of this issue of native speakerism, right? If that, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to probably talk about this first, right? And then we would want to talk about um, conferences. And I think we're going to talk about conference plenary speakers as one topic. Now, what, what do we do with, with this, like native speakers, right? So 
this perhaps requires a little bit of knowledge of, of the topic, but it's, it's very simple, really. So native speakerism, you can kind of compare it to, like, let's say, sexism or racism. Uh, the main difference is that, you know, unlike racism, which is based on, you know, someone's perceived belonging to a, to a given uh, perceived race and all the, you know, discrimination and negative stereotypes that go with that, native speakerism is based off on or someone's belonging to, you know, someone being perceived as a native speaker of a given language, right? And all the discrimination prejudices based with that when it comes to teaching English. And native speakers are often seen as better teachers, better models of the language, better everything, right? So this is kind of, you know, do we talk about this first or do we talk about it within native speakerism? Well, probably I might need to first kind of address this issue of you know, kind of who a native speaker is uh, in order to be able to talk about the issue of discrimination, which is native speakerism, right? Now, once you've got these main topics, right, you want to list some subtopics. In other words, like, well, what kind of stuff am I going to talk about? Well, I probably need a definition, right? Almost whatever you talk about, right, you, you need some sort of a definition, Right? In here, we, we need to talk about like previous studies, effect, for example, of native speakerism, reasons for it, right? Maybe, right? I'm just kind of brainstorming right now, you know, but you, but you get, well, you, you get my point, right? You want to list like sort of subtopics that you're going to be talking about under each main topic, right? Now, one thing that people get wrong is that they say, well, but I can't review any literature because like my topic is very unique and no studies have been conducted on it. Well, that's true because th that's the reason why you're doing your topic because it hasn't been done before. But like what you want to do is like be looking at the, the broader picture a little bit. So in my specific case, nobody has talked about, you know, native speakerism uh, when it comes to conference plenary speakers. This has not been done before, right? So what I need to do here is I need to, you know, look at um, representation of, uh, you know, women, um, people of color at conferences, right? Um, and I could look at conferences in, in general, uh, you know, uh, but also as um, plenary speakers, right? And then I want to look at um, other disciplines uh, because no research in English language teaching, right? Right. So if there's no research on this specific topic in your field, well, that's amazing because you found like a huge research gap that you can research forever, basically, right? But you want to be looking at this topic of like conference plenary speakers and you know i'm looking broadly speaking at discrimination of a particular group of people right so you can do the same and you know look at discrimination of other groups of people at conferences and as plenary speakers in other disciplines right such as i don't know mathematics or physics or whatever else it is right and then afterwards that brings you you know we're going to add it maybe as our point um Number four, um, research gap plus aim, right? That's always comes the last, right? So the, the whole literature review builds to this, right? Now, let's look at how this was actually done in, in this paper. And we're going to move down to um, the literature review, right? And you can say, you know, that first we've got the concept of a native speaker, right? And we provide the definitions in here. Now, the thing is that this, this section is a little bit long when it comes to, the, to who a native speaker is because it's a fairly contentious issue, right? So if, you, if you've got a topic like that where like, lots of researchers disagree how to, for example, define it, right? And there is no consensus, then you might want to spend a little bit more time discussing it because for our study, it raises important issues in terms of the uh, methodology, right? Because what we did was to investigate the balance of plenary speakers um, with the goal of whether there was disparity 
along the lines of speakerhood, right? So we, we would basically kind of look at how many native and non-native speakers there were at the conference. But first we have to define it. But if people disagree in, in our field how to define a res native speaker, well, then we need to present that disagreement, right? In order to then be able to, to have a definition that is working and we can use in our study. And then we move on to the concept of native speakerism and conference speaker representation, right? So first, as almost always, you need to define the concept, right? And then we present the past research on this topic. So basically, you know, the effect of native speakerism on English language teaching, right? And then, you know, notice this sentence. The, there is no research basically on native speakerism and conferences, right? Or just like, or there's almost none or, or none, literally, right? So what, what we do here is what I told you when we were structuring it. Well, we're just going to look at discrimination and bias at other conferences, right? We look at surgical conferences, you know, and there's a lot about um, imbalance when it comes to females of plenary speakers, right? And people of color and so on, right? So we also look at ethnic minorities among conference plenary speakers. But notice that, you know, we can't look at native and non-native speakers and we can't look at conferences in English language teaching because there is no research on it, right? So we want to look at, you know, the broader issue of discrimination and conferences in other scientific disciplines, right? Um, if, that, if that makes sense to kind of expand our literature review. Um, we look at, you know, the reasons for this discrimination, right, at conferences, right, and any potential explanations why um, this happens, right? And then we move on to the research gap um, and then the aim of this paper, right, if, if that makes sense. So to sum up, you know, the, the way to structure your literature review and write it in literally like one day or a couple of hours is to look at the main topics of your research aim or of your title. Um, write them down, put them in the, in the most logical order, and then list any subtopics, and then put them in the most logical order, right? And then start writing. Now, if you'd want some more personalized help publishing research papers in higher impact journals, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation where we're going to identify your main challenges, um, what your goals are, and then prepare a personalized action plan for you that will help you to achieve those goals. And the link to book that free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.